Okay, so you remember from our last diagram, which is here um, on the screen for you, uh, we were looking at the basic um, monopoly diagram, and that monopoly diagram making supernormal profits, and we looked at some of the characteristics behind um, supernormal profits. Again, know your basic structure of MC, ATC, AR, and MR, okay? Um, we're going to look at slightly more complicated um, monopoly diagram. Now, this diagram can show so much, and I would really strongly encourage you to um, memorize this diagram and to use it effectively within your answers. It can show both supernormal profits, it can show a loss of supernormal profits, um, and it can also show us our allocatively efficient point, which is the point I'm interested in looking at now. So, on this, um, diagram just again basically the same as uh, the previous one some key points that we're going to sort of um, point out one thing I would always I'm not going to look at the profit maximizing level of output first uh, I'm going to look at another point um, obviously a profit maximizing as we know MC equals MR which would be this point here um, I'm interested now in this allocatively efficient level of output now whenever we draw our diagram we said that at the very start that the firm in a monopoly, the firm was the industry. Now if the firm is the industry, we were looking at price determination in the industry and we would look at this, um, the equilibrium in the market. Now how do we show that with a monopoly? In perfect competition it was easy because we had two diagrams. The one to the left you might remember was the one showing the um, uh, supply and demand and we could see the equilibrium point. Um, on that diagram. On this one, well, where do we see equilibrium? Where do we see the needs of society being met? We see that through the MC curve also equals our supply curve. Okay, now go back to basic AS economics. We said that equilibrium, okay, where goods and services are all allocated, the perfect allocation of resources was whenever the market was in equilibrium, whenever supply equals demand, whenever both the firm and the customer were satisfied. Okay, now looking at this allocation, the perfect allocation of resources, whenever supply equals demand, MC equals AR for allocative efficiency. Okay, so profit maximization, MC equals MR. Um, allocative efficiency when MC equals AR. Okay, when demand equals supply. So, follow these two curves across. Demand uh, equals AR and uh, MC equals S. Follow these two across and you'll make this point here, get your ruler and draw your dash line down to show Q1 and then show your price level then at Q, sorry, P1. What is P1? Now, at P1, Q1, society's needs are being met. Okay, customers. Uh, the right number of customers are receiving the right amount of quantity of the good or service and it's been sold at a price where everybody is happy and they're able to afford that. Okay, now that's in the ideal world for allocative efficiency. All needs in society are being met. We said in our last um, video that monopoly firms, um, like all other firms, are profit maximizers. They're out to benefit themselves. They want to maximize their profits for their shareholders and to reap those um, returns uh, for shareholders. So where are they going to look to operate at? Well, they're going to look to operate at the marginal cost equals marginal revenue, which is our profit maximizing level of output. Whereas that, MC equals MR. Follow those across. Find that, as you remember from the last one, do your dash line. This becomes now Q2. Move up, you might remember, this point, which is our selling price. If we were a profit maximizer, that is. Okay. Uh, so this point here. So Q1 would be the allocatively efficient level of output. Q2 then would be the profit maximizing level of output. Okay. Now, you can simply enough draw that diagram and show the differences between both. So A and B. If the firm was a profit maximizer, they would charge a price at P2, which would obviously be higher than the allocatively efficient level of output. Now, by charging a price at P2, that price is higher, creating then this area of deadweight loss. Okay, the firm now has lost, um, so this is an area of welfare loss. Um, some customers or some people in society cannot buy that good because the price is too high. So if it was maybe a necessity good, um, they may find it difficult to purchase that because the price level is now high. Price at P2 
there's then that movement along the demand curve, that contraction along the demand curve from B to A, which um, ultimately decreases demand for that good or service because the price is too high. Not many people or fewer people now are willing and able to pay that higher price. Government intervention now in Monopoly might bring or might aim for the firm to bring the price at P2 as close to P1 as possible. Now it's not very easy for governments to do that but there are sort of restrictions and sort of monitoring of ways to control prices. Governments will want a price at P1, shareholders will want a price at P2 and you've got then that conflict of objectives. Government objective will be social benefit or social welfare. Um, individual firms or the profit maximizing firm their objective will solely be um, profit maximization okay so they're not really interested in the needs of society they're interested in making money so where are they making money on this diagram again from your MR equals MC move up until you meet this point here of where the dash line for the price level hits with the ATC curve and I'm going to do a dash line across here and I'm going to keep that going until I hit this line here and I'll explain that now in a reason. Now I'm going to do this as a blue area and I'm going to do this one as a red area and I'll do this one as a yellow or highlighted if you can see that area um, and I'll come back then to my dead weight loss now, listen very carefully to this, for this is where we're showing this, this changes in profits and this diagram now by adding in these colours has become slightly more complicated. And if the firm wasn't operating at Q1 and the firm was a profit maximiser and was operating at P2 and Q1, let's forget about this now for a second, they will be making a supernormal profit. Okay, And we can tell that because the ATC curve is below the um, demand curve. Now, what type of profit are they making? Well, they're making a supernormal profit. Monopoly firms can make a supernormal profit in both the short run and the long run. Okay. Now, that level of profit might change, um, might increase or decrease, for example. Notably, the uh, monopolies will want to increase and maintain that level of high supernormal profits. Now, if they were operating a Q2, okay, remember I said forget about Q1 now for a second. If they were operating a Q2, they would be earning a supernormal profit, which equates now to the area of the red area and the blue area. Add those two together, that's the total area of supernormal profit, okay, which is great. Now, let's say, for example, governments intervene, or let's say, for example, the objectives of the firm switch, and the firm moves away from being a profit maximizer, and they move now towards being um, an allocatively efficient, meeting the needs of society, producing goods and services that consumers want, consumers need, at a price which everyone, uh, which consumers um, will be willing and able to pay. As we lower that price, we've got that movement along the demand curve from A to B. We've got that movement now along uh, the demand curve. More people are now willing and able to purchase that good or service. Um, consumption of that good or service, uh, intake or you know, uh, yeah, consumption of that good or service now has increased to Q1, which governments will want. Okay, depending on the nature of the good, maybe it's a merit good, for example, um, the good the government w wants to in uh, with positive externalities, um, the governments want to increase the consumption of. Um, as a result now of moving to point B, selling a price now at P1, the firm loses the area in red, and they lose that area of supernormal profits. Okay, but they're still making a profit. They're making a profit of the blue area, and they've also now gained the yellow area. Now, if you were to add the blue area and the yellow area together, that area would be less than these two added together. So what you need to take into consideration is that if the firm was to move towards being allocatively efficient from A to B, they would be losing supernormal profits, but they would not be making a loss. Okay, They're still making a profit. They've lost the area of A and they've gained the area, sorry, they lost the area in red but gained the area in yellow. Now note the area gained is less than the area um, uh, lost. So we're losing more supernormal profits than what we're gaining. The firm, again, if it was a profit maximizer, if it was forced by government to reduce to price P1, then they'd be, they, they would be facing a very heavy loss. They obviously wouldn't want that. 
If it was their own decision to do that, well then they've decided, look, we don't want to be profit maximizers anymore. We want to meet the needs and expectations of society. Notably, your publicly owned uh, monopolies, your things like um, TFL, for example, the NHS, they'll look to operate at this point. They're not interested in making massive amounts of profit. They would be maybe interested in making a profit because that could be reinvested back into the um, actual industry. Last thing then to mention, if I have a pen, notably this area here um, of dead weight loss, loss of economic welfare. If we were operating at P2, if we were a profit maximizer, these people would not be able to purchase that good or service. If we decrease that price, we reduce that area of dead weight loss. We reduce any negatives on society. Everyone in society now can have access to that good um, or service because MC equals or supply equals demand. MC equals AR, which is the allocatively efficient um, level of output. Like I said to you at the very start of this video, these or this diagram in particular, it shows so much. It shows supernormal profits being made. It shows price determination. It shows uh, welfare uh, loss. It shows the allocatively efficient level of output. It shows changes in the level of output and changes in the price level. If the firm was to change its objective from being a profit maximizer to um, being allocatively efficient. It shows the consequences of changing objectives and the consequences of changing price. Remember the monopoly is a price maker. They can change their prices. Um, if they do change their prices, well, what's the consequences to the firm? The consequences is that they lose profit and you've shown this in this we're losing area A and uh, we've gained area um, in the yellow. So we lost the area in red and we've gained the area then in uh, yellow. What you can do, which I've sort of um, sort of mistakenly said um, throughout this video, you can label these areas as opposed to colouring them in because you won't be marked for your colours. Um, but A, B and C maybe. Um, and you could simply say in your answers, as a result of being all uh, allocatively efficient, the firm reduces its profits. They lose the profit of area A and they gain the, uh, the profits of area C. It can therefore be illustrated that the firm gains less profits than what they um, lose. The firm is losing more profits than what they're actually gaining. So it may not be worthwhile if the firm is a profit maximizer and if they're forced to do so. Governments will encourage firms to be allocatively efficient. They may even subsidize firms to be allocatively efficient. They will implement things like um, competition policy, for example, to ensure that firms are being fair. They're not exploiting their customers. They're providing a, a good or service which may have positive externalities, which is a merit good which needs to be provided in society. They're providing that good without exploiting their customers. There's only one firm in the industry, a very small number of large firms. They may even collude if they were oligopolies, for example. But in monopoly, um, to avoid that abuse of price setting power, to avoid the firm just constantly out to make A and B, um, we think, well, look, they need to be regulated to avoid the exploitation of um, customers. And again, governments will encourage firms to operate at that allocatively efficient. Contradictory point to that, if they do operate at allocatively efficient level of output, the firm is, as we've mentioned before, losing those areas of supernormal profits. And as a result, Governments may actually gain less in cooperation tax. Okay, so it's sort of six in one and half a dozen of the other. Where you will have benefits, you will also have negatives. So the benefit of monopoly, they make supernormal profits, they can be dynamically efficient, they can provide a great quality of service. However, on the other hand, they can abuse their trust um, and exploit their customers. Overall evaluation is that look, we need monopolies to provide in, in, in essence essential services. However, it is essential that they are regulated and the governments monitor their behaviour to avoid the exploitation of customers. We need monopolies to provide those um, services, but they need to be regulated to protect the customer. And it's the role of government to protect customers. Okay. Again, I hope that helps and I hope that you feel more confident with using this diagram in your responses. I've seen some um, responses where students seem to be scared to draw these diagrams. Time yourself. How long does it take you to draw um, this diagram? How quickly can you draw it? Memorize it and feel more confident with using it. This diagram speaks a thousand words and you can gain so much marks if you use this to support your analysis and your evaluation. Okay.